Hello and welcome to another Lightboard session. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about what Docker really is and what makes it possible, what makes it special. Now, you would have heard about Docker a lot so far. I've spoken about why Docker is important, why Kubernetes is important, what makes it, you know, what makes it sort of uh, so interesting as a technology, why you should bother about it. I have also mentioned about uh, the history of Docker, how it evolved and how we arrived at where we stand today. Now, talking about Docker itself, Let's just learn about what is under the hood. If you open up Docker, you know, what do you see really, right? That's what we are talking about. So Docker is a technology which would offer you a containerization way to run your application in a contained environment. And what that means is it's just like a VM, it gives you a way to run your application along with its runtime. So it's not just the application, it also has its your runtime. And that includes, let's say, any dependencies, any uh, libraries that it requires, also the operating system files. And all of this runs as a virtual environment. Typically on, let's say, if you have a Linux ser server, it can run your Linux containers. Or if you have Windows Server, you could also run one or more of Windows containers there, right? Now, what makes it possible to run an application in a contained environment without creating a virtual machine? Because it's not a virtual machine. There is no hypervisor involved here and it's not running on top of a hypervisor either, right? Now, what makes it possible to run it then is the Linux kernel. And uh, there are a couple of features of Linux kernel which allow you to run your process in an isolated environment. The first such feature and the foremost feature is name spaces. So what appears as a container is nothing but a bunch of name spaces which are created by the Linux kernel for you. So when you run your application, it creates a network namespace, for example, it creates a root file system. That is how you are able to run, let's say, on top of uh, Ubuntu machine, you can run a CentOS container, a Red Hat container, uh, and any other version of distribution of Linux that is uh, possible to do that. Because each of this container has its own root file system. Apart from that, apart from network, you can have uh, PIDs. So each process, each application that you run will have a PID starting with, let's say one, just like how you do it on a Linux system. Um, it has its own uh, uh, users, which is possible to do. So basically your system users and these users can have certain mapping or you know you can basically create a virtual users inside that as well. And then there is a UTS namespace which provides it with host name and uh, so on and so forth. So what appears as a container and what separates one container from another is a bunch of namespaces. Only those things are virtualized. Everything else is from the system. So unlike virtual machine, where everything is virtualized, including your CPUs, uh, memory, the, you know, the kernel, VM has its own kernel, versus the container does not. Container is sharing the kernel with the system here. And it's just running a process, just like a process running on your system, but in an isolated environment. And these are the things which are isolated, nothing else. Everything else comes from the system. So the primary feature which makes it possible is the namespace. The second feature, which is Google's contribution to the world of containers, is called as C groups. C groups offer resource isolation, which is very important because you might have a memory leak in one container which can affect every other process on your system or other containers as well. You definitely do not want that to happen in a multi-tenant environment where you're running multiple applications on the same server. So how do you control that? Use control groups. Again, this is a de facto feature of Linux kernel. You don't have to do anything else, anything extra to enable this. Both of these features are available in the Linux kernel by default. And then later, Windows kernel incorporated some of these features. There are different names, uh, but you know it's in parallel. So similar features were incorporated into Windows kernel 
starting with 2015, 2016. So you can now run Windows containers on Windows. One limitation of containers against VMs though is with VMs, you can run a Linux machine on Windows or you can run Windows and Linux on a Mac machine as well as virtual machines. With containers, it's not possible. You can only run Linux container on a Linux system or a Windows container on a Windows system because essentially it is a operating system level virtualization. There are a lot of things which are common including the kernel itself. So these are the features which are under the hood of Docker. There's one more feature which is quite interesting. It's from the file system point of view. And this is again, if you compare it with VMs, so if you have a VM, we're talking about file system features Let's say you create VMs using images. You also create containers with, let's say, Docker with images. But the difference between those images is this. So let's say if you have different things as part of, for components as part of your image, you have an application, you have dependencies, you have uh, certain other binaries, uh, libraries, you have the operating system itself. If you update the application, and that's what you typically do, let's say your image is about 450 MBs, you'll have to recreate an image even if you update just the 50 MB part here and you'll create the 450 MB image and distribute that. Versus if you look at the Docker image, if you update just one layer of that and when you, you know, create a new image or if let's say if you have my version one of the image and if you want to download the V2, you just have to transfer what has been changed because essentially Docker stores this image in the form of layers. So if you do not have a particular layer, you copy that and that's quite interesting. So all of these technologies make Docker a very, very interesting product. And then there are many other things uh, which are which are in, under the in, into play as well. But what I wanted to demonstrate here and talk about was what makes containers possible, that is one, that is the Linux kernel and its own features, and what makes containers so interesting. All of these choices that Docker has made, the technical choices while creating the software, is what makes it a very interesting product. Apart from that, what makes it so appealing is the ecosystem today, because it's not just containers or Docker that we're talking about, um, it is the orchestration engines, it is the registry to distribute the images. So image distribution is artifact management is easy. Uh, tooling is easy because you can install Docker and containers and get started with containers within minutes with Docker desktop as a software. So Docker has made it really easy to get started with containers, to work with containers and to extend it and just, you know, start deploying it in production environment. All right, so I hope that was useful for you. And what we talked about in this lesson was what is under the hood when you talk about containers and what makes it so interesting.